Hi guys, welcome to the Game Changer Show. Today we will talk about blockchain gaming. And my guest is Johnny, as known as Hustlepedia. We will talk about traditional gaming, blockchain gaming, NFT trends, and metaverse trends. Stay tuned. Hello. Hey, hey, how are you? Hey, I'm good, I'm good. You? I'm doing awesome. It's Friday, so I cannot complain one bit. But it's going to be a busy week with NFT NYC next week. So it never stops, even, even in a bear market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen on your Twitter that you're going for this event, right? Yeah, it should be good. They always say it's the biggest NFT event, and I didn't go to the one last year. So I guess it's uh, something I have to check out if they say it's the biggest one. Just out of curiosity, when do you think we're going to see the bottom? When? Uh, that's so hard to pinpoint, of course. Um, like I said, I mean, this could go three months, six months, a year. So it's really hard to tell. Um, I, I think around maybe, um, and this is just a complete speculative uh, event, but I think you know the, the midterm elections here in the US could have a little bit of a shift on the market if there was some sort of sentiment uh, positively potentially around that time uh, with the economics and some new initiatives people are talking about. Or you know, some, usually around that time period, things do shift in the economy. So I think with midterms in the U.S. this year, I do think that that could potentially be a time. I think that would be in you know three to six months uh, in that time range. But also on top of that, if we're really in a depression or a, a recession, then we could go much longer than that. Okay. So, Johnny, we're here not actually to talk about uh, current situation in the market, but thanks for your opinion. We're of here course. to talk about blockchain gaming because I know... I know you're a big, big guy in blockchain gaming industry. And please introduce yourself to our audience and please tell us how did you got into crypto space? What is yeah, your story? Of course. Of course. Um, so what's up, everybody? My name is Johnny, a.k.a. Hustlepedia. Uh, I do host the In the Game show on the Crypto Banter channel. We have a little over 500,000 on YouTube. And as well, uh, I'm Hustlepedia YT on Twitter. I just tweet a bunch and give a bunch of information on crypto gaming, NFTs, metaverse, etc. And I really got into the space based on my esports background. So my esports background, I had spent about six years competitively playing Call of Duty. Uh, so anyone who knows, obviously, anyone here is probably a gamer. So first person shooter, I was playing at a very high level, like playing for money all the time. So I was always in that competitive niche trying to, you know, be better than other people and try to, you know, win money in these games. So play to earn immediately kind of triggered with me whenever that came to the landscape. And then on top of that, I had bought so many skins in these different games. So people understand like you spend all this money on like Fortnite skins or Call of Duty Warzone skins, Valorant, CSGO. There's so many microtransactions in these games. And then when you look back, like when you stop playing those games, you like look at your inventory and you're like, what did I grind all that for? Because I can't even do anything with it now. You know, you, you have all these unlocks and equipables and skins, but there's a one way marketplace. You're just giving the studio your money. So then NFT gaming popped up into the landscape. Last May is when it really started getting hot uh, with Axie Infinity. And I've been in crypto for a couple of years before that. And just kind of lightly just investing Bitcoin, Ethereum. I wasn't too much of a degen at that time. And then, um, you know, I was able to kind of pick up on the blockchain gaming wave the second that it came about. And I started making content on that. And I kind of left behind the, the esports stuff. And I pivoted towards play to earn games from competitive gaming. So that's really how I ended up here. And now um, over a year later, we're really deep into the NFT gaming space and, and you know, crypto gaming is basically all that I focus on along with NFTs. Wow, that's awesome. Cool. Uh, tell me please, how, what was your motivation? How did you move from traditional gaming to blockchain gaming? Because, you know, yeah. from my friends, I have so many friends from traditional gaming and they just hate blockchain gaming. They just hate. They're like, the experience is not there. Like, it's not real gaming. And like, how 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 did you move from traditional gaming to blockchain gaming? Yeah. Um, and initially and just realistically, it was not because there was a game that I wanted to play. Right. I just saw the complete opportunity of that industry. So I think that's def you're definitely uh, they're correct. You know, your friends are correct that, you know, gaming right now in the state of the blockchain, it's not where it needs to be. Like we don't have these 
in-depth open world games or first person shooters we don't even have like sports genre out there at the moment in crypto games they're all very much auto battlers um you know very low budget games that don't cost that much to make uh but they you know with the tokenomics and stuff like that they go through these massive cycles with the inflationary economies so there's a lot of flaws in the games right now i actually got into the games because the people I was gaming with and the people I was competing with in Call of Duty, uh, still, I, I, I'd quit this, like I said, r about last April, May, to shift completely into crypto gaming. I gave them a call in the market. Um, I, told, I, I told them to buy Alluvium because they were asking me. And they held on to that for quite a while, and it did really well. And they were like, you need to just talk about this on YouTube. You know, quit playing games, and you should talk about crypto games because you really are sharp in that industry. And you know, so thank you to them for putting me onto that track to kind of leave that behind because uh, I felt like I had a lot to lose at that point because if I just left that behind and this didn't work out, it would have been very risky. But I clearly definitely went down the right path. Wow, that's cool. So uh, you told your friends to buy Illivium, right? To invest yeah. in Illivium. Yeah. Okay, Johnny. Can you tell me as a friend what should I invest in? Oh, uh, right now, right now you just need to stack stable coins, wait for the market to bottom because these you know, uh, here's what I'll say and you know th this goes for a lot of these gaming projects out there. The ones that are quality crypto gaming projects that do have tokens, they're taking 80 to 90% drops already. And they could probably take another 50 to 75% drop. That would not be very unlikely if the market keeps going south for many months ahead so i think that those will be some of the biggest gainers when we do end up going back up like the actual legit projects with good teams that aren't like cowering down in the bear market but are doubling down on their protocols in the bear market that are actually like building up for the next cycle and continuing their development so mm -hmm. i do think that right now i wouldn't invest into any of those crypto gaming coins at the moment but there will be a time where they're all at, and they're getting cheap, but it's hard to lay off on some of these prices. But I do think that, you know, we'll get to a point where they're so cheap. The market caps are so low from where they were that it's going to be a no brainer to start unloading. And, you know, those could be the easiest multipliers when the market does go back up. Right. So there is no chance for me to become a millionaire right now. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. And I, I, you know, I, it's it's a long game if you want to play the millionaire game for the most part in crypto. Right. Uh, so next question I have for you: What do you think are advantages of blockchain gaming? Yeah. So the it advantages, yeah, um, the advantages of blockchain gaming. I I think that you know when you I mentioned at the beginning with the traditional games, they just they today they function all their revenue off microtransactions. So I believe last year there was fifty two billion. Uh, and microtransaction purchases in, in these games. And, you know, most of that is complete profit. I think the profit margin from that, from these studios was 35 billion. So with the 17, they, they you know, that's an insane profit margin for these games that do have very high overheads to develop the games. But 35 billion in microtransaction revenue last year. And, you know, like I said, all these players, they spend so much money inside of these games, but they're just forking over their money to the game studio and they don't own anything in their account, like truly. It's it's kind of like having your crypto on a centralized exchange. You don't own it at all, uh, like if you have to make a metaphor. So whenever it's on your Activision account, Activision really owns that. You're just a profile that's attached to it. And you can't trade it. You can't sell it. You can't level it up anymore. It's just stuck there. With NFT gaming, there's so much potential with these marketplaces that are player to player, peer to peer, and not you know, one way, only buy assets, you can't sell them, it creates an actual economy within the game. So these games, you know, traditionally speaking, we, we went from Atari to like Xbox 360 to where we are now, we're about to head towards the metaverse. And this is like a whole brand new curve. So these economic models have been flawed to this point. But with the asset ownership and the true, I, I would say, affection for the player to have towards the game when they actually do get the access to own their camos own their skins it just takes it to a different level because people do latch on to that that material type of item within the game and that's one way for them to actually you know be able to be one step closer to that ownership and one thing that traditional gaming needs to pick up on is the studios could make more money if they let 
players trade the assets because they can still sell assets just like NFTs, like skins and camos and stuff like that. But just like OpenSea, they could make royalties on every single resell of any asset. So these games are actually missing out on more profits if they were to just let their players trade it because they could take a fee, so to speak. So I think there's gaps on players' ends and uh, the, the studio's ends. That's right. What do you think could be improved um, in blockchain gaming? Tokenomics uh, and, and tokenomics and gameplay. I'll, I'll, I'll hit on both really quickly. So tokenomics, obviously, Axie Infinity really set us up for kind of a disaster in the industry with with the governance token, but then the inflationary token, which is basically compared to the U.S. dollar. They just keep printing it and keep printing it every day. It's losing value every day if more people aren't joining the game. So it set it up. They're not Ponzi's. You know, they, a lot of people make this uh, analogy towards the inflationary models because they're just printing these dollars. And if more people aren't joining the game, then the token's going to start going down. And there's too many tokens being printed into the economy to sustain itself. So it kind of sets up a pyramid-esque model, right? So if it's a funnel, right? The more people that join, obviously, the more money everyone's going to make until that funnel stops filling up. That the, was kind of the model that these inflationary tokens set us up for. And I think we need to move towards NFT earnings. So I'm sure you're aware of big time. So big time is like doing, uh, for example, NFT drops. You beat a mission and an NFT drops on the floor. And then you pick it up. And it's not like a token model. because in games. No one's ever played Call of Duty because of a token price or, you know, there's no token prices with any game in, in the history of the world. Like no one needs to associate monetary value to, oh, this game is good or bad. So gameplay needs to step up because the only people that ever played Axie Infinity, Peg Axie, I mean, and I, I, you know, I delved into these economies myself. These games were very boring. They were very simulation. They were very, you know, you were playing them to make money, right? Yeah, most people there are playing them to make money. And some people have to treat it like a job in some of these countries where scholarships were so large. So I think there's a big problem with tokenomics and then gameplay. We, we talked about this earlier, but yeah, game, the games aren't where they need to be. We don't have those really quality games that actually capture market share from Web2. Right. Absolutely agree with you. So when when do you think we can have that? perfect game where we can actually have fun and it's not just you know one click game because all the games yeah. you have mentioned before i also played those games and it's basically it's so boring you know yeah you're yeah. making some money but the gaming experience is not there it's, it's just so yeah boring. it's not really a game it's not so when do it's... you think we're going to have that perfect fun game Addictive. yeah um I think that's uh, one of those things like the market. It's hard to exactly call the timing, but you know, with Alluvium coming out with big times, full launch, um, I really am, am ambitious on what the shrapnel team, the AAA first person shooter on avalanche network is doing. Uh, there's a lot of games that are a couple years, probably down the line uh, that are also being developed that are like AAA first person shooters and stuff like that. But between Alluvium, big time shrapnel, I like Mobland. I wish I, I think that their Mobland could get a good amount of players to come play their GTA Saints Row style game. I do think that that could get some adoption. Heroes of Mavia, which is a mobile game, it's like a clash of clans on mobile. Those are five that I would say that right now I do have an eye on to potentially bring a little more market share and bring quality games to the table because uh, I do think they're all building great products. But as far as a game that's going to literally be like, the people on Twitch are going to be like, I want to play that game. You know, like that's the level we need to be at to compete with anything out there that's like an Apex Legends or something like that. So I would honestly say, you know, I, this is a long game that we're playing here. 2020, late 2023, early 2024, maybe we see the first like triple A game. Because you have to think these games, if they're really building a studio level game, triple A, Call of Duty style, Call of Duty's make two to three years to take two to three years to make. And they have the most money you could ever think of. So these Web3 gaming studios, most of them are literal startups. So you have to give them time. And I think the studios will come out with games, but it'll be later next year or early 24, where we see like high, high level blockchain gaming, like 
to the to the potential caliber of what we see today. Right. Uh, so earlier you have mentioned metaverses. Tell me, please, are you living in any metaverse? Uh, <laughs> Or in any metaverse? Yeah, I, I definitely have explored a lot of them. Um, so I've gone into the sandbox, you know, uh, Decentraland. I've gone into some of these different game. I've been into a lot of the different gaming environments, obviously. Uh, but you know, most of the, mostly right now, what's built out is sandbox and Decentraland to be able to hop in today. Um, and I I love what they're doing. I think that they're both brilliant projects, but I don't consider that the future of the metaverse personally. So I, I think just like games, I'm bearish short term on metaverse because I think that it's just not once VR and AR and all that stuff plays into it. And it literally feels like you want to be there over, you know, your potential real life in the evenings or something like that. It needs to be, it needs to be an experience that you desire to hop into every single day. And I don't, Right now, they don't capture my interest to that level, the, the sandboxes and the Decentralands. So uh, I don't currently live in any of them. I do have a couple of land plots in them because, you know, I, I am oh, I'm betting on the metaverse industry, of course. So I do have some land in some of these different metaverses. But uh, at the moment, I have to say uh, I'm underwhelmed with what's what's happening in the metaverse space. OK, to be honest, like in my vision, metaverse is something like when you wear vr and you and you just appear in different world where you can actually you know have fun or relax but sandbox and decentraland that that's not place for relaxing and for fun it's more like minecraft game you know yeah Why, that's exactly how i feel that don't you think that that this is not metaverse <laughs> Uh, it's it's not in my opinion you know we were told the metaverse was ready player one right we, we it's supposed to be an experience you know virtual reality augmented reality right. that type of stuff that literally takes you from where you are uh, no matter what it is i can't get into something so much that i don't remember that i'm standing here at my keyboard and on a computer screen this is not a metaverse right so it, i think people we have to slow the brakes. It's just like the same thing. The development curve is going to take a little bit to get that virtual reality aspect really hammered down. But I think the adoption of the metaverse is a no brainer because if you look back at the social media wave, in my theory, at least the social media wave, sure, MySpace was before Facebook, but Facebook really set social media on fire. And that's what birthed like the Twitters, the Instagrams, which they eventually acquired which turned into the TikToks and that kind of spawned from YouTube. But that was all kind of the prime development of the social media era from like mid 2000s on. And Zuckerberg was in front of that at that time, you know, when he came out with Facebook. And now he's the first guy to go out on the limb to be like, we're going to change Facebook to meta, which is a super bold play. So he definitely sees that potential and sees it as that next social media type of wave. If he's willing to go out on a limb and completely change his developed brand, which did enter the social media game, basically a first mover in the social media game. So I think that that shows the confidence enough that more people will build off that. They'll see what Meta does and then more of these big institutions or these big platforms like Amazon could have a shopping metaverse very easily. And I'm sure Bezos is having that developed right now, but he's just kind of waiting to see more of these metaverses so they can master it, right? So all these different like, let's just say iPhones, they took the traditional phones and they mastered it. But Android and iPhones, they can coexist. They're both still alive, right? So once they all see each other's products and then cultivate to the next version of it, I think we're going to see the industry just compound on it. Right, right. Actually, I'm absolutely agree with you. I think that in the future, we're going to have metaverses for different purposes like one metaverse for dating, like instead of Tinder, you know, one yep. metaverse for talking like Facebook. That's going to be fun, I think. I could see that happening 100%. Instead of messages on the screen on a dating app, you're like talking to them in the metaverse. That's a completely game-changing experience. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. I Actually, I have VR, Oculus, and like I just want this metaverse, so I wear my VR and I'm in different world, talking to people, having drinks, you know, 
that would be so much fun. And Absolutely. actually, another thing, I I was thinking that probably 2022 is the trend for metaverse. And I kind of feel like we should start investing in metaverses. Yeah, we're we're at a I feel like it's been a quite a while since we had that catalyst news, obviously, uh, for the metaverse or like that next big company coming into the metaverse. But, you know, I also think that these companies might be waiting for a little better market sentiment to like announce so people are more engaged and they care more potentially because they all calculate that between market and the announcements most of the time. But at the same time, um, I agree with you. I mean, if you're looking at a long-term horizon, if you can find the infrastructure and the metaverses that are going to actually, you know, make noise and and be relevant for years to come, then I think it's a great time to definitely start putting those watch lists together and start getting in on a metaverse. And like I said, like I've bought some metaverse land, you know, people say it's like buying land in Manhattan in like the 1920s. I don't really believe it to that level i think that's a little bit overblown because that's that would have done insane return on investments over a hundred years but who knows you know that's the whole speculation of it and so i'm definitely i have a few land plots here and there but i'm waiting still on coins i i, I will get back in on some metaverse coins but as of now i'm pretty exposed just in, as far as nft assets okay cool so you have mentioned you have some land in some metaverses what metaverse you have yeah yeah so i have some land plots across multiple i i have one for sandbox one for decentraland just for exposure purposes i have a few in network netvrk um mm -hmm. i'm very bullish on what they're doing uh, i have some they actually Go sorry ahead. sorry for interrupting you they actually aiming for uh vr kind of thing right they are not, yeah not just, um minecraft game they want a complete immersive experience yeah vr the whole nine so that's what they're going for I, I really like what they're doing at network i have some plots there i have some um plots in alluvium i just bought those at that the land sale a couple weeks ago so i got Dang. some off the auction uh, i have some land in big time i have some land in heroes of mavia and i think that's it off the top of my head at least i'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to think because I there's so many of these games. I have some in Vulcan Forged, Metaverse. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm pretty exposed across different sectors, genres, etc. So you have mentioned before about NFTs. Uh, tell me, please, any projects, NFT project you're bullish on? Yeah. Um, so NFT projects, I'm bullish on. I really, really like the guys over at My Pet Hooligan and what they're building. So their background, they came from Pixar and they have their full production studio. And, you know, these guys are heavy hitters as far as their experience, like Pixar to the level of like they worked on Toy Story animation. So they have this open world alpha game out right now. They just launched their staking for their hooligans. They have all this stuff down the pipeline. They've done merch drops. They've done a lot of different stuff, but they're not the type of guys to really like overhype anything. And they're very low key. They just keep working and the community is very bought in. And the alpha gameplay is so fun because you it's open world, but it's like action, there's games, there's different like side stories. It's very fun. Okay, cool. I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty sure you heard of uh, Goblin Town, right? Yeah, of course. Why why do you think this project is so hyped? Um if you look around the state of the NFT market, there wasn't a there hasn't been any hype drops for a while um in the space before Goblin Town. And then cuz there was kind of, we were kind of going into a bear, it was the entrance of a bear market for the NFT market as well. And mm -hmm. with the crypto sentiment as well going down, it was just the perfect storm for someone to just throw a complete meme on the table and say it's a free mint and here you go and the art's just absolutely wild to me uh, i i i don't understand it but it, it is what it is and uh, so they threw out this free mint in a time where people really kind of desired something like that or they needed something to kind of latch on some faith to right they needed something to have hopium uh within the crypto space as people say sometimes so I think that they took off because they really were calculated. They launched in the heat of a dying market, a, a, a bear NFT market, and said, here's a free mint. We're going to have some fun. And I, I think the community just kind of caught on to it. Okay. Uh, do you think it's a bear market for 
NFTs as well right now. It, it, I think we're in a bear market for NFTs. I mean, whenever I, if you scroll on like the the rankings, for example, on OpenSea, you're able to see like, I mean, the board ape floor has taken like a 60 ETH drop. We're looking at, you know, even the ape land and all the ape stuff has gone up over time. I'm pretty sure the the land for apes is one of the only things that is under price now because of what people paid for gas and the mint. They're only at two ETH now. And at this ETH price, most people paid more than that price to get these lands. Uh, so a lot Dude, of these I projects, I don't know. I, I'm not exposed to any of the board ape ecosystem myself. But yeah, when I look at these floor prices, they've taken such hits. I mean, even even mutants had a, a massive run. They're down to 17 Ethereum. Uh, it, Goblin Town's back down to three Ethereum after getting up to like, I, for, I forget what they peaked at, but. A lot of these quality projects have just taken a massive, massive hit. So I, I feel like we definitely are in some sort of an NFT bear market. And it happens with Ethereum because they bleed value so much quicker because people start undercutting the floor to sell to get some liquidity back. But ETH's also dropping at the same time. So it combines this factor of dropping floors and dropping Ethereum, which causes definitely an NFT bear market. So do you think now is the right time to build and to buy or should we wait for more time a little i think if i think ethereum safely goes into the triple digits uh you know under one thousand dollars i i 100 see it going under a thousand dollars which is gonna just bring these prices even lower so um i think the sentiment in the nft market there's no rush i wouldn't say right now um nft nyc next week most of the time when there's an NFT gathering, uh, something happens to the market. Or consensus last week, we had a market meltdown again. Bitcoin Miami, we had a market meltdown. So now we have this NFT event too. So, uh, I, you know, I don't, see, I don't see a lot of people out there aping into mints at NFT NYC or, or out there buying uh, on OpenSea. They're more out there for the event and, and to meet people. So I, I think no rush to get into to anything at the moment. Let Ethereum go down a little more, I would say, because more people freak out, more people paper hand their assets, and it brings the price down even lower on floor price as well. So, you know, I would safely wait, um, you know, maybe maybe look in July and see what the prices are compared to today, and then start to maybe look at accumulating some blue chips. Okay. So guys, we're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm sitting on my hand I'm I'm sitting on my hands so I don't force myself to to ape into anything right now. All right. So tell me please, let's uh, wrap up our conversation. Uh, tell me please, how do you see the future of blockchain gaming of metaverses? What is the future? I don't know in five and ten maybe years. Yeah. Um, I I I am on unbelievably bullish on the nft gaming industry for everything i've said in the show for you know microtransactions being replaced with asset ownership and that's just a player trigger so where we're at right now gamers don't like the word nfts like literally that a lot of their problem they think nfts are a scam but if you just tell like every gamer traditional that i've asked that's not into crypto not into nfts they ask what is nft gaming and i say have you ever bought a Fortnite skin? And most of the time, or whatever game you play, yes, they, they usually say yes. And it's like, would you like to be able to sell that later on if you like quit the game? Would you like to be able to go in there and start making a little bit of money back off the time that you put into the game? They always say yes. So once that catches on for players and more studios start to pump out really good games, and I'm bullish on those short-term games, as I mentioned, like Alluvium, Big Time, Shrapnel, etc. And then long-term, I do see high level studio level games getting into the space and you know right now we've seen ubisoft say that they're interested we've seen epic games just recently partnered with gala games to put their game on the epic game store these are big steps towards the future of you know where crypto gaming can go and i think that this is a model that also benefits as we mentioned earlier it benefits the studios from the resell that they could acquire from these assets there's no resale market. And that's where a lot of the NFT market makes its bread too for these big projects with massive royalties. So all in all, I think it's beneficial for the player. I think it's beneficial for the studio at the end of the day. They don't even have to change their business model. They just created a secondary marketplace that people can trade it on. And at the end of the day, this 
gives the literal power back to the players and the players drive the game without players. These games would be nothing without community. These games would be nothing. And I've never seen anything like community than within the crypto space. Cool. Very nice. I see the bright, bright future. Definitely. And think about it with the NFTs too. Last thing I'll say, I see NFTs getting to the level of it proves your home ownership on the, on the blockchain. It can show your car title all the way up to the level of potentially preventing identity theft, right? So you can get your identity stolen by just clicking on a wrong link on a website and it takes your information and like a credit card loop, you think you're buying something and then they steal your credit card, they drain your credit card and they steal your identity with your socials, all that stuff. That could be prevented with blockchain technology, with the government sanctioning, you know, do not give your seed phrase to literally anybody, you know, never you know then you're never guys everything never. you own is then protected under the blockchain which we know if you don't make a mistake it's impenetrable so i think that it could get to that level down the line where identity theft could be potentially uh, prevented via the blockchain by the way um last question i have for you nowadays so many uh, companies and influencers talking about interoperability uh, do you think we're going to have that in near future, maybe? Um, so I think that that definitely plays into it and down the line. Whether it depends on what the integration is. So if it's characters going into uh, taking your character from one game going into another, I 100% see that happening. And that could be short term. Like some games could integrate character integrations into each other's games in the short term, I would say. I think an interoperable metaverse, like where we're all in one world, I think that will take a while, for example. But I, I think interoperability plays into a lot of roles because I've heard people that are building like a like a chain agnostic game. So like their their NFTs are on Ethereum, the games on Polygon, uh, you know, they're they run something through Immutable X or like they, they're on a lot of different chains nowadays, like functioning on different blockchains and that allows more users to join who are maybe more prone to joining with the avalanche chain or polygon chain but also it creates an interoperable ecosystem so short term i see it with character integration and with blockchain integration long term i think we'll get to the point where there will be some projects that go really ambitious and like this is the interoperable metaverse everyone can come in here with their characters and participate but that, that's going to take some time and some care, I think. Right. Yeah, they even call it uh, multiverse, right? Yeah, I think the multiverse, yeah. Yeah. Some kind of um, new type of luxury. <laughs> Let's hope we get there. <laughs> right. Okay, Johnny, thanks a lot for coming for my show. Really, thank you. Thank you so much. As I said before, I'm stalking you on Twitter. <laughs> I need to follow you. You need to drop me your Twitter name so I can follow you back, by the way. Sure. Um, I will beg you. Yeah. And thank you so much oh, for having me. Uh, I absolutely love what you guys, what you guys do at Cedify. And, you know, I really appreciate um, having me on the show and, you know, looking forward to anything we do in the future. Yeah. By the way, we are about to launch our NFT marketplace at Cedify. So that's why we covered some topics about NFTs and metaverses. Of course. And you know, I'll be taking a look at it on the, uh, in the game show. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.